Hey everyone, welcome to the video. In this video, we are going to explore how to create sound with Python using sine waves. Now right here, I have a couple examples of the finished product. And this first example simply plays a C4 note. So if I run the program, there you see it, or here it does that. And um, this other example, it plays a chord or three notes at the same time, the C major chord. And this final example, it plays two frequencies at the same time, and these two frequencies combined actually sound like the emergency alert tone. That might sound familiar. Um, anyways, in this video we're going to explore how to create this and learn a little bit about sine waves. Okay, so we are over here on the sine wave Wikipedia, and I'm going to be completely honest with you, I'm not a sound or sine wave experts at all, but just from this article and this function right here, we can uh, learn enough to generate a sine wave in Python. So this is actually the main thing we're interested in right here, this equation. A times sine of two times pi times frequency times time plus phase. Now that's quite a mouthful, but it's actually pretty simple. And all this does is return the x coordinates of a sine wave uh, from a function of time. So uh, let's go to this graph over here. This graph is created by inductive load, uh, public domain. domain. And uh, basically, if we were to pass in a specific time to this uh, time frequency and amplitude to this function, uh, we would get a spot somewhere along here and depending on the frequency and amplitude the y coordinate would well y and x coordinate would change and be somewhere along this red line depending on the value okay anyways uh we are going to implement this into python it's actually pretty simple i'm going to come up here into vs code and create a new file called tone.py and we, we are going to import a few modules. We are going to import pygame and then import numpy. And this is going to be used, numpy is going to be used to uh, make the sound array because we're going to store all of the sine wave information in a really big array. And then we are going to import math because we need to access pi. So we're going to say def sign x and this as we see from down here it needs to take in the amplitude so we're going to say amp and then it also needs to take in the frequency and the time so we're going to say freq freq and then the time okay and you can optionally supply a phase if you want although we we are not going to do that in this case because the phase is uh you know, initially zero in this function, and you do not need to increment it or provide a phase if it's just zero. So uh, after we do that, we're going to return, um, let's see, what is it? To the sine of two times pi times uh, frequency times time. So return amplitude times math dot sine then two times math dot pi times frequency times time and there that equation is now implemented into python and we are the only uh modification we are going to make to it is we are going to round the result so we're going to just wrap that in a round function and then cast that to an integer so we get a fixed value and no floating numbers. Anyways, uh, this function is done. Now we are going to create a tone class. And this tone class is going to be used to generate a, uh, to actually play the sine wave. So uh, we're going to say class tone. Oh, actually, before we define that class, we need to define a couple global variables real quick. And we have to initialize pygame. So uh, to do that, we're going to say pygame.init. There, pygame is initialized. 
Now we need to set the number of bits for our, our sound array. And bits is going to be equal to 16. And then the sample rate of the sound array. Sample rate is equal to 44,100. And this is just a good number for this. And I'll, uh, I'll share why in it. Just a couple seconds. And then we're going to say pygame.mixer.pre in it. And then we are going to pass in the sample rate, oops, sample rate, and the bits. Okay, and I think I imported that. Okay, let's not do that. There we go. So we are done up here. And now we will create the tone class. Okay, so class tone and now we're going to create a function in here or a method called sine and this will actually play <coughs> a sine wave given a frequency and a duration so we're going to say def sine this will take in a frequency and the duration and that's going to be uh, set to one by default and then a speaker option here it's going to be set to none and this will just be used to control which speakers uh, the sound is played out of if it's set to none, we'll have it play out of both of them. If it's set to R or L, we'll have it play out of right or left, uh, respectively. Okay, uh, now's a good time for me to mention that a lot of this uh, sign generation tone code is from this Stack Overflow answer by user Odd Meta. I'll share a link to this in a in the description. So, anyways, um, that's where we get this bit up here, the, the bits, the sample rate. This this is the uh, the values that he used and it works. So thank you, user odd meta. Uh, anyways, uh, we're gonna continue with this function now. So we're gonna def define the number of samples that we can, uh, that we're taking for the, um, for this sound array. And that's gonna be dependent on the time or the duration and the sample rate. So we're going to say num samples is equal to int and we're going to round and then in the round function we're going to say duration times sample rate. So that means for however many seconds we will uh, sample 44,100 uh, bits per second. Okay. Now we create the uh, sound array or sound buffer. And we're, uh, this will be used to store the bits <coughs> and then create a sound. So we're going to say sound buffer is equal to numpy dot zeros. And I believe this just creates a numpy array with um, just plain zeros. And then you pass in, in a tuple or a tuple, however you say it, num samples two, and then the d type is equal to numpy dot integer 16, or 16-bit 16 integers. So this basically creates a numpy array that is all set to zeros, and every value can be a 16-bit integer. Okay. Uh, now we need to define the amplitude of the sine wave, and this will simply be amplitude is equal to 2 to the power of bits minus 1 minus 1. Okay, now we are ready to actually loop over our samples up here and give them values. So we can actually create a sine wave and store them in the sound buffer. Okay, so to do that, <clears throat> we're gonna say for sample in range num samples. And we are going to extract the current time for this sample. And this is gonna be equal to, we're gonna say time is equal to float of sample Actually, this should be uh, sample num, sample num. Okay, 
uh, float of sample num divided by sample rate. Okay, now we can actually generate the x coordinate for this uh, for the sine wave at this current time, given the uh, amplitude and the frequency. Okay, so to do that, we simply say sine is equal to sine x amplitude. Oops, amp. The did I spell that? Nope, I didn't. Amplitude and frequency and then the time. Okay, so this gives us the x coordinate of the sine wave at this specific time given the amplitude and the frequency. So now we have to set the current, uh, the corresponding bit in the sound buffer to this uh, x coordinate of the sine wave. So we're going to say uh, uh, if speaker is equal to R, and that's if the speaker is the right speaker, we're going to set sound buffer of sample, oops, sample num at index one is equal to sine. And now we're going to do the same thing, pretty much the same thing with the left speaker. So we're going to say if speaker is equal to L, then the sound buffer at index of sample num at index zero is equal to sine. And then otherwise, if the, uh, sp the speaker is set to none, then we will play it through both of them. So we'll just copy that code, get rid of that if statement there, and there, we are good to go. Now, down here, so so actually, first let me explain. This for loop uh, loops over the samples, the number of samples that we have, and sets each bit in the sound buffer to the corresponding x coordinate of the sine wave given the amplitude and the frequency. So I know that that may sound complicated, but trust me, if you're following along, it will work, and then you can play around with the code, change the values, and get a better idea of how it works for yourself, which is always very rewarding. Okay, now we actually generate the sound. So now we say sound is equal to pi game dot sound array or SND array. Oops, dot make sound. And then we pass in the, the uh, sound buffer. Okay, and this is a Pi game sound object that can be played. And now we're gonna say sound dot play. And we're gonna set the loops equal to one, so it will play once. And we're gonna set the max time equal to um, an integer of duration times 1000 milliseconds or one second. Okay, and now we are just going to call time.sleep. Oh, we have to import the time module up here. Import time. Time.sleep, and we'll just sleep for duration. And this will just allow us to play tones uh, individually one after another. And you'll see later how we can uh, play sounds at the same time if we want. Okay, now we actually uh, have enough code where we can actually test this. So let's create a new file. We'll call it main.py. Oops, not main.yip. Main.py. Okay, and we will import, I shall say, from tone import tone. And now if we say tone.sign, and then we'll give it a frequency and the duration, we'll just, we'll set that to, uh, to two for now. And then if we run this code, it should hopefully play an A, <coughs> an A note or four, four, 444 hertz frequency. So let's 
do python main.py and float object has no attribute sleep on line let's see line 42 what do we do time dot sleep oh okay because we're setting up here we're setting time to this float okay and that's causing that's causing an issue with the time module okay that's not a big deal uh we can just rename this to we'll just call it t t is totally fine i think there we go now it's recognizing that so if we clear that and go back over here and we run it how about that we get a 440 hertz uh sine wave for two seconds which means everything is working perfectly